QuickBooks Online 2024 Budgeted Income Statement Export to Excel and Modify Part Number 1 Get ready and some coffee because we don't just do data input. We get totally into it within two its QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The report's located on the left-hand side. We're in the favorites, opening up the balance sheet, which is everybody's favorite report, at least one of them. Open link in new tab, right-clicking on the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Open link in a new tab, right-clicking on the trial balance to open a link in a new tab. Let's tab to the right. I'm going to close up the hamburger and then we'll do the changing of the range to the data points where there's actually information in this practice file. That being first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's OK, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 010124 tab, 033124 tab. Selecting the drop down so we can see it broken out month by month and then running it to refresh it. Let's tab to the right. Same thing with the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Closing the hamburger, changing the range. 010124 tab, 033124 tab, from totals to months, and then run it. And then we'll do this one more time, tapping to the right on the uh, trial balance, closing the hamburger, changing the range, 010124 tab, uh, 033124, and then selecting months and run it. So now we're going to be starting the construction of our budget, remembering that within QuickBooks, the budgeting is something that you can do a data input into and make a very basic budget based on past information. However, to do a more detailed budget, you might want to take past information, such as we're starting on the income statement information, export it to Excel, use that to make projected budgets from, then import it back into QuickBooks, why do that? Because QuickBooks is good at running the reports such as budget versus actual. So you can compare what actually happens as time passes to what you predicted to happen. So if I go back to the first tab, just to note where the budgets are located in QuickBooks, it's in the COGS dropdown, and then we have the tools, and then we have the budgeting. So we can create a budget here. We can make balance sheet budgets and uh, both profit and loss and balance sheet budgets. The profit and loss is probably the first place to start when you're thinking about how to budget, it being the performance type report. So we'll get back to here when we import our budget uh, back into QuickBooks so that we can run reports. The reports being found under the reports here and we'll then have our, our budget reports that basically uh, we can run, such as the budget versus actual. Okay, so let's go back to the income statement. Uh, so our plan is going to be this. We're going to take the prior information. That's usually the starting point to create the budgets going forward. If we had a whole year's worth of data, one strategy might be that you take the whole year of last year, budget it out month by month, export month by month, and then and then uh, use that as your starting point. That works good if you have a seasonal business. Method number two, you take the whole year's worth of information from the prior and just run it as a total, right? We'll just do the totals only. We only have two months, but if it was for a year, you run the totals and then say, I'm gonna take those totals, divide it by 12, and that will be basically my starting point for each month averaging out my income for the prior year as my starting point. That might be a good method if you're in a situation where you don't have a seasonal business 
and you want kind of like the average performance over the year if you're somewhat static over the year if you've been growing over the years then you might say hey look i don't i want to take december's numbers because i think they are in alignment with my growth trend which i believe will continue going forward therefore i'm going to start with december and then do my budget uh from december mapping out december as what i think is going to happen as my baseline budget and then adjusting from there for us we only have two months of data input so i'm going to kind of imagine as though uh, those two months of data input, we have two and a half months. We did some in March, but only two full months. So we're going to kind of imagine that those two months were actually last period, uh, November and December, export them to Excel, adjust the Excel budget, and then import them back into our system so we can run reports budget versus actual for the first two months. Well, let me show you what I mean. Now, you could do it with the income statement, but I don't like exporting the income statement as much to, if I'm going to adjust the budget because there's all these subtotals I have to deal with on the income statement. What I'd like to do is just have income minus expenses, basically. And so the easiest starting point might be the trial balance for that kind of report. So I have January and February. Notice the trial balance has the balance sheet on top of the income statement. So I have all my balance sheet accounts, cash down to uh, owner's equity. And then the income statement starts here at income on down so i can export this and just delete the balance sheet accounts leaving me with the income statement accounts that's what i'm going to do now i could do this again month by month but instead of doing that i'm going to just take my full two months not including march here just the two months of january and february numbers uh, by the way you can't really export as easily uh, the trial balance if you wanted to do an income statement period by period because QuickBooks closes out uh, the 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 income statement on a yearly basis so so that so just be aware of that you'd have to export the income statement in that case if you wanted to export like a month by month income statement generally okay but for us we're gonna go for o2 let's go from 010124 to 022924 so we have two months of data that's all we have thus far in our business we're gonna imagine that's going to be our starting point for the budgeting process so let's go ahead and open or export that to Excel I'm gonna export to Excel now I'm gonna do some Excel work I'm gonna do it fairly quickly just to give you an idea because it's not an Excel course but I'll try to go slow enough that if you have some Excel background, then you know, you could follow along with this as well. We'll also give you the end result uh, so that you can just import it to uh, uh, QuickBooks if that's what you would like to do as well. Okay, so hold on. I messed up here. I messed up. Wait. There, it was a mess up. So that's it. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to close that out and then let's make this back go back to totals only totals only and then i'll export it okay so there we have it now we'll export it du -du -du. export to excel and open it up okay this is going to be my starting point all right so i'll enable editing gonna save it okay so now what i'd like to do i'm gonna i'm gonna scroll in so i'm i'm at 100 percent. i'm gonna hold control and scroll in a bit Okay, the first thing I tend to do is I, I like to have the whole thing formatted in the same font. So I have weird different font here from over here. This is eight and this is eight, but then over here I have 11 and this is bold and this isn't bold. So what I do is I'm gonna start with my baseline uh, Excel font, which is 11. Uh, and so I'm, and then I'm just gonna go to the home tab and paintbrush it on the entire worksheet. So that's my starting point. It changed all the cell references to non-numeric cell references. So now I'm going to right-click on the whole sheet and format this to my baseline underlined format that I would like, which I usually choose currency, uh, negative numbers bracketed. I'm not going to get any uh, th the dollar signs. Let's remove it. And then I don't really need the decimals because it's a budget. It's going to be an estimate. So this will round it, but I'm just going to remove the decimals. So it's a little bit easier to see and okay. I'm going to make the entire sheet bold, which I think is easier to see in a screen recording. Home tab, font group, bold. You don't have to do it bold on your end if you don't want to do that. 
All right, so then I don't need the header. So I'm gonna put my cursor from one down to four. I'm just gonna delete all of that there. I don't even need the debit and credit thing. I don't need the debits and credits. Let's get rid of that. Right click and delete. Get out of here. And then I'm gonna go down below. I don't need the totals. So, wow, that, they did it with a long formula. That is interesting. I'm gonna put my cursor on 50 on down. I don't need those for the double checking. I'm gonna right click and delete that. Now I'm gonna delete all of the uh, balance sheet accounts. Now, if I have a problem with this, I'll stop saying now, I keep saying now, don't I? If I have a problem with this, I can always double check this to what's on my income statement. So I'll double, I can double check my net income to what is in the income statement. Let's go as of 0229 to four. So, so, so I have a check number and if I mess up, I can always, you know, do it again, right? <laughs> so I'm going to delete from row one, or is that a row? Yeah, rows, not columns, rows one down to owner's equity. That's the entire balance sheet. So the income statement starts on this billable expense income. So I'm going to right click on all that and just delete it. And now all I have is my income statement. So I have the income statement in terms of debits and credits. So, so notice if I sum this up, right, the credits are here. That's the income basically. And the debits are here. If I sum that up, the difference then should be net income. So one, three, two, four. So one, three, two, four net income. Dude, let's double check that one, three, two, four plus I got rid of the pennies. All right. So that, so it looks like that's good. So now I'm going to delete that. I don't want it in debit and credit format. I want to make all of my, my, let's make all of the expenses negative numbers. So I can see these as negatives and these as positives, and then it'll net out to net income. So there's a trick to do that. I can right click, I can copy this. I'm going to try it over here. So I don't mess anything up and right click and paste special. And then I want to transpose down here transpose make uh is that it no no that's not what i want to do i want to subtract subtract which should make it negative so i'm going to say okay so now it pasted the same thing but they're all negative so now i can just copy this and put it back over here boom and so so there we have it notice these all have formulas like funny formulas it says equals even though i don't need like an equal sign in there so I'm going to take this whole thing and copy and paste it just one, two, three. So it's just values, values only. So now I don't have any weird formulas. Okay. So then I can put everything in one column so I can take this whole thing and drag it into one column or equivalently, I can right click and cut it or control X and then control P or uh, v or I can paste it, right? So I can do this control X, control V, control X, control V. Okay, so there is that. And then down here, notice that the subcategories get kind of ugly on the trial balance, because it gives me the parent category and then the subcategory with a colon. I don't really need the parent category. So what I typically do is I go in here, double click and just get rid of the parent category. Meaning, uh, just to show you what I mean, if I go to the income statement, we have some accounts that we made like a parent account and then a subsidiary to it, insurance, the subsidiary. On the trial balance, it doesn't have a triangle drop down. Therefore, it shows that it's a subsidiary by putting the parent colon and then right up and then the subsidiary account. But I don't need that. So I just want the subsidiary account. So I'm going to double click and get rid of all the ones with a colon. So get out of here that this taxes, payroll tax adjustments, all I need. So I'll get rid of all the parent account references, then I can make this a lot smaller. See, I can make this column smaller. And then my net income. So my net income, I can calculate by just summing this up equals the sum of these boom and it should still be the same one three two four which i can double check 
over here, net income's at 1324. Okay, so now I, I have just a basic income statement with the income as positives and the expenses as negatives. I can calculate that by just summing it up. There's my income statement. That's a great starting point for me then to budget out. I'm, what I'm gonna do next time is basically map out the months. I'm gonna imagine this is two months worth of data and I'm gonna kind of imagine that it was last year, meaning November and December of the prior year, and then map out January to December and use, use these numbers to try to figure out what I should uh, populate on a monthly basis going forward. So that's gonna be our starting point. Let's save that and we'll continue from there uh, next time. So if I go back on over, we'll continue to map this out and then, and then we'll go back and import it. Once we map it out, we'll import it into, uh, into the budget here on a profit and loss type budget. And then we'll see if we can run uh, reports. We'll run reports with it. That's what QuickBooks does well. So QuickBooks isn't really generating the budget. You can generate a basic budget, but if we want to do anything more than that, Excel, I think is a much better tool, but QuickBooks is still in the, in the process because then we want to put it back into QuickBooks to run mainly my opinion, best report, the comparative reports to see what actually happened to what we budgeted to happen.